So you start the miracles. Now the next step is to do the calibration. Now why do we calibrate the miracles? We calibrate the miracles because you know it's it's one of the most accurate equipment in the field. But over time, the equipment you know start losing the accuracy. It's what we call drifting. So to make sure that your equipment is as accurate after six months or a year using it versus when you just bought it, what you have to do is calibrate. So you click on the calibrate logo, you go next. So what you do here with the Miracles, there's a bottle with a special formulation of all the gases you analyze, it was a calibration gas. So you take that and you take one of the syringes that says CalGas. So you take the syringe, normally this is the way the syringe, the, the tip is closed. So you open it, you screw it on top of the, of the valve, and you open the valve of the CalGas. Okay. So now you can see it's filling up. Now what you do is you have some air here that has mixed with the CalGas inside. So you do one quarter turn and you remove all that to make sure there's no contamination. And you let the syringe fill up with the calibration gas. When the tip around arrive here, the first thing you do first is you click and you close this valve here so this plunger doesn't pop out. And then you close the valve of the CalGas bottle. So now you have a syringe full of the calibration gas. So what we do, again, you remove the, the white pin and we just screw the CalGas syringe here. Now, you do not need to screw it very strongly. Just, you know, the, the, the thread here it's made of soft metal, so you can damage a thread if you if you torque it too much. So just with two finger, as soon as you feel some resistance, that means that you're okay. And what you do again is you open the valve and you push on the plunger and see if the plunger comes back. If the plunger comes back up, that means that you have no leak at the connection. If the plunger doesn't come back up, that means that there's some kind of a leak and you have to investigate. So that so the, the plunger comes back up that means that you have absolutely no leak so all those steps are explained step by step in the ppm report now that uh, we have the cal gas in the syringe what we do is that we are going to inject it and it's going to take two minutes to do the first calibration you know and we do two calibration this computer will, the PPM report will compare them and the difference between both of the calibrations should not be more than 2%. If, the, uh, if you're under 2%, then your CalGas calibration is fine and you can move to the next step. If there is a difference between the calibration more than 2%, we recommend that you run the third calibration sometime for different reason. You know, sometimes the first calibration of the miracles is not perfect and we have to run three calibration and the system will take the last two and compare them and set up the the, the miracles for that those last two calibration so here is the first calibration now one thing that's very important when you do calibration is always look where the methane curve is and where the carbon monoxide curve is over the, the time period for the separation. This is a normal positioning, meaning that your uh, Mirkos has no moisture buildup into the channel. So you can see your CO is being measured around 105 seconds. Now, when the moisture buildups happen in the Mirkos, what will happen is that the CO curve is being pushed on the left side. And at the same time, also the methane curve is being pushed in this area here, that curvature. So what will happen is that suddenly you will see your CO not being measured after 105 seconds, but around 90, 80. And at one point, if there's so much moisture, the CO will be so much on the left of the curve that the methane will be on this curve here. 
and you know, the, uh, the miracles cannot measure it anymore. So then that's when the miracles will send you a message that says that your measurement are skewed and you cannot calibrate. And what it means is that now you're going to have to recondition the, the miracles. Now, when you recondition the miracles, by reconditioning the miracles, the moisture is being evaporated. And what it will do is that all both curve of methane and the carbon monoxide will come back at the right position. So here we are, as I said, for the first calibration. Now, the measurement we get is in millivolt. A miracles doesn't measure per, per million. The detector me doesn't measure part per million. It measures mostly in millivolt. So what this thing means is that in the Cal gas, your hydrogen concentration was at 306 ppm in that calibration gas. Generate an electrical signal of 108.7 millivolt. So this is the relation between the calibration in P gas in ppm and the millivolt. So what we do now is that we will do a second one. So we repeat. So we go back, make sure that there's no leak, and we will inject a second time, wait two minutes, and then the system will compare both of them. So now we have uh, two calibration. So as you can see, the PPM report will compare calibration one with calibration two. The difference, all of them are less than plus minus 2%. So what it means here is now you have your, the Mirko's is properly uh, calibrated for the Cal gas. So you get rid of the Cal gas, close the syringe, put it back here, and you accept it. And then you purge. So the purge will be 30 seconds. What the purge does is that it will push out the calibration gas that's inside both channel to prepare the miracles for the, the next uh, calibration. So the next calibration is what we call an air calibration. So we use now the syringe that says air, and we use the syringe that is the CO2 trap. What this syringe does is that it has a chemical that when the air goes through, it will mostly remove all the carbon dioxide that's in the air. So, you know, the air comes in, has maybe around 380 to 400 ppm of carbon dioxide. When the air comes into the syringe, it's mostly oxygen, nitrogen uh, free of carbon dioxide. So what you do is you remove the tip, you screw gently the CO2 trap to the air calibration syringe. Again, you open the, the you open the valve here, so like that. This is a three-way valve, so the white plastic pin shows you which part is closed. So here. Mostly the valve is open here and open here. Now we want to have the air comes in and fill the syringe. So what we do is that we close this entrance. So now this valve here is open, this valve is open, the air will go through. And what you, what you have to do in the process is you have to get air in and you have to do it not too fast, not too slow at a steady rate. So sometimes it takes a little bit of training and experience to do that. So what you do is that you go and you try to do it at you know, a steady rate. Usually we do that two or three times to saturate the, uh, the CO2 bed. So push out, do it again a second time. When you push out the gas, never push it back inside. Just push it directly. So you, what you do is you close the valve here and you push the air this way. And we'll do it the third time. So now you have an air calibration syringe ready. So you disconnect, you close the valve and you close this. You make sure you always close this because if you leave it open, the air with the carbon dioxide will come in, will saturate this very rapidly. This will last, could last a couple of years properly uh, 
operated. But if you forget to close the valve and put the cap, then the air will saturate that in a matter of a couple of days. And then you put it back there. So now we have uh, air calibration. So same thing that we did with the cal gas. You go there, you screw it very, very gently, no pressure, and you leave the, the valve open and we check to make sure that there is no leak. So, so now that we've purged, we go next. So again, the, the PPM report will explain every step of the way what we just show you here in the video. So you go next, we double check to make sure there's no leak and we inject. And again, you know, now sometime, you know, between two calibration, the system has to wait a certain amount of time. You will have that kind of message that asks you to delay the injection until all the other gas that's inside the miracles have been pushed out. So you, we always recommend that you say, click yes so there is no overlap in the measurement of the gas. So we go here. So it's just going to wait. In this example, it's going to wait around two minutes. Well, it's already injecting right now. So the, you know, the, the, the time lapse in between was very small. So now we're going to, we're injecting the uh, air calibration again for two minutes. And the measurement results, all the results have to be zero, except the carbon dioxide that have to be under 10 ppm. If the carbon dioxide calibration is under ppm, 10 ppm, and all the other gas is zero, then your air calibration is done, then your full calibration of the Mirkos is done. And now, from now on, you can do as many DGA you want during that day, as long as you don't close down the, uh, the Mirkos. So you can do one DGA, you can do 10, you can do 20, as long as that day you don't close down uh, the Mirkos. If you close the Mirkos, then when you restart the miracles again, now you have to recalibrate. So the calibration, the air calibration is finished. So we go next. Now here, here it is. So as you can see, all the measurement are, of the gas are at zero, but the carbon dioxide is higher than 10 ppm. It's a little bit high, it's on the 13 side. So what it means is that, you know, we have not removed enough of the, uh, the carbon dioxide. So what you have to do is try it again. So again, we screw this, open that. And this time I'm going to try to do it a little bit faster. Sometimes you have to do it faster to get, to remove the CO2. Great. This is the part that you need a little bit of uh, training and, and uh, you know, over time to try to get to the right, uh, the right amount of carbon dioxide to remove. So again, so we're back and screw it gently. We check, make sure there is no leak. And what I'll do is I'll do repeat, re-inject again. And again, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to wait around three three minutes between the two injections, so there's no overlap in the measurement. And after the three minute thirty second, then the system will inject the gas and will measure it. So here's the uh, second calibration. Now you can see uh, uh, an air calibration to be successful. All the gases have to be at zero, and the carbon dioxide have to be less than ten previous one we were at 13 so we were a bit high the second one now we're at 9 so now uh, you know we're okay for the air calibration so what you do is that you highlight the calibration you want to keep and you accept it so now your calibration is complete your gas calibration your air calibration is complete your miracles is properly calibrated as I said earlier as long as you do not shut down the miracles, you can do as many DGA as you want during that day. If you shut down the miracles for whatever reason, then you will have to redo the calibration to make sure the, the measurement are very, very accurate. So the calibration is done. And the next, uh, the, the next step we do is how to uh, collect the oil sample.